but they're not going to be coming into this underestimating a team like FBX. No, certainly not. Magnum quoted in the press conference saying, it's Valorant, anyone can lose. Here we go then, into the pistol round, and Carmen Core had three players up towards A. Anticipating this space control, perhaps, but FBX are not committed with it. Not quite flash to clear with the Dizzy, all combined up. That's going to be the dash active now for Martin. Using that in the response of it, but there's no go button press here for FPX. Keen to just wait this one out on the opposite side of the map. Autumn went poking around, and he managed to catch Tomasi. Good opening here. I mean, it does open up the B side entirely. A repeat from Live. He's got the heal online, but Martin returns with the kill. Nice trade. Lysor didn't buy the orb in this round, so having to use the wall in order to escape there, that means there's going to be no wall placed down over towards B. So Kamen Core are going to have opportunities to try to deny this plant, though they are players down. That's true with the paranoia here, FBX. One of the sidelines blocked off. Now look at this, the Omen Smokes are lovely for them to take more aggressive positions on site. Kamakor all up towards Kitchen, doubled up here, but just picking and choosing their battles at the right time. They have no idea! They have no idea where they're being shot from. Through the great here, one player left standing is Lisa. We'll see what they can do. Snake bites, at least one connection, but the wall's up in their face. They've got to really just get a move on as well. Wrapping all the way around here. Shin sticking to the fuse here for the pistol round. It's all calm and caught. And that's the power of that retake. It's what the desks were talking about, Carmen Core look so good in those kind of situations. But really, the retake wasn't even where the danger was averted for FBX. It was the fact that Magnum was able to pick off two from this angle. I mean, yeah, looking all over the place. Look Ultimate at I mean, is completely lost. On us with them. And this is where you might start to see the cracks in FPX because they've talked about the fact that the language barrier has been an issue for them, a really big one in the past. Berlin said in the press conference, he's having to repeat the communications twice a lot of the time in English and in Chinese so that everybody on the team's on the same page. That's going to introduce delays, and it was an unusual position anyway for Magnum to be taking that fight. The pistol round secured, deep home and smoke. Magnum has to body check a lot of this space, really. There was some danger there, but clears out towards mid, knowing that nobody's lurking. And those lurks are going to be a pretty important part of how FBX creates threats on the attack side. Smokes from Lysor and Berlin need to be dealt with. And sometimes that's going to require face checking, and when those opponents hide inside smokes, that's a great way for teams to get upset wins. Yeah, here we go. Offloading the util here with the dizzy. Play's not been pushed off from the backwards positions, though, out towards the back and aside. It's a nasty and messy spray. No kills collected there, but only just for life here with the heal online. But now reinforcements are here, finally arriving. Multitudes of targets to pick from, but really coming caught. Coming up green in the kill feed. Blue, surely. I mean, well, okay. Some kind of teal. It's a teal. You could, you could make <laughs> the argument. <laughs> yeah, easy cleanup, despite it looking a little laboured there from the right early, early on. And now FPX, first round where they can do some serious damage after the pistol. Five Vandals facing off against KC, who have three Bulldogs online as well. Clear weaponry advantage for FPX, especially down these longer angles that they might want to take over towards B. And defaulting the Viper Wall, A, at the start of this round. Not quite the same as they did on the pistol, because this time we've got that Viper Orb coming down mid too. Does have that threat of potentially working their way through into mid. I'm call lovely. Would love to set their sights onto a bonus round conversion. As you said, longer fights to be taken with the rifles of FPX, and they're cautious just at the beginning, initially here. They don't want to run into things. Omen Smoke. Now propped up, will divide up the side and allow them to start to take a bit more of that space once they clear through the appropriate positions. But we're almost down to a minute on the clock. And they haven't created too many threats oh. in mid either. Almost betrayed wow. there by the ponytail, but Shin gets away with it. And Berlin with nobody there to try to support. The IGL gets picked off with no advantage, no possibility of a trade, no information even as to where Shin and Martin could have repositioned to. As FBX come back in here, they're going to have to use these flashes, the Dizzy, just to try to figure out where those players on defensive A would have gone. Yeah, and it orchestrates kind of exactly where these FBX players are going. Now it really does feel like it's going to be landing into an A hit. Shin, it's a great timing saved. on the wall. Yeah, I mean, for the precisely right moment. The right flash over the top. It's going to be going straight through the gap at the top there. 
connection. Martin willing to take the fight, the transfer damage done, but no kill. In fact, that's all life here, just leading the charge for the rest of his team. Is there only going to be clean up onto Shin eventually? Very Time, weak. 12 seconds, and yeah, life is weak. Pops the ult off. Might be able to get something going with this one. At least he's one more kill for it. Nobody watching. Back there up, it got is. Back up. Needs to get the plan down. Four seconds. Taps. Taps. Forcing it into the one you want to see. Only win condition for life. And time is born and played. Frantic in the minute. In the minute moments. I mean, minutia making the difference there. That's a wild one for FBX to not convert, honestly. The spray from Martin was really labored, a little similar to Narei when we saw him with the Bulldog in round two. Ten seconds left. But how Magnum gets past there without Life being able to get the kill? Life whiffing on the spray means that Autumn goes down. And Life unable to convert in the 1v1 as well. Was he decided to go for that uh, the, the duel instead of just sticking the plant. That's a tragedy for FPX early on. Back to me. Box the economy down, a peg or two, so going to be working with some weaker weaponry. Life's going to be after making the most, I think, of this Guardian purchase. It looks fairly explosive here over towards B. Aeon having that ult online, it would be a really large investment early on before you've managed to create a pick for yourself. Yeah. Smoke's finally back online now to just cut off sections onto the site. Snake Mites and Molly, just in case they want to press the advantage and push also the back of the site. But it's just being held for control here. Carmen Core, happy to play this retake. A lot of focus being put on that angle where Magnum managed to pick up two on the pistol. A weak spot, perhaps. We'll see now. There's Wingman. That's going to be spotting out a player or two. Berlin. Let's get the initial kill, but not enough to get the follow-up here. But down below the bridge, where's the expectation of it? Narrate, he was dropping down, but not enough bullets in the clip to really finish him off. 3v3 shots, life regaining the advantage potentially there. It's traded Last back and forth. Standing. It's Narrate versus Ayang. Narrate comes up with the goods. Rifle in his hands to get the job done. And plenty of time left on the clock, too. That one had danger in it. It absolutely did. But Kami Kors still managed to forge their way up to four. FPX deciding not to invest Aeyang's ultimate into that round, where perhaps you know, it could have made the difference. It did end up being fairly close. Frankly, if Autumn even gets that kill, the round is looking really dodgy. I gotta say, while Kami Kors are up 4 0 here, this is not the same level of clinical play that we saw from them in EMEA when they were making that run. There's a lot of conversation about because we've seen so many unexpected teams make it to Masters Madrid with so many rookie players as well ascending to this premier level of the game. Are people going to adapt to the stage quickly? If you have some nerves, how do you play through it? It feels like it's a little touch and go at the moment for Carmen Core, but enough to be able to get them over the line in these rounds. And similar nerves on the other side for FBX. You've got to remember, FBX are a team, this is their third time getting to a global event. They've only ever been able to take one map at a global event before, and that was against the old Carmine Core when they played first time at Lockin. It was a 2-1 victory in favor of Carmine Core, and that was that was the old, you know, Melons lineup. That wasn't the <laughs> that wasn't the Madrid clean, clinical calming core yeah. that we've come to expect after their running kickoff. It's well-honed squad and, you know, to just touch on that rookie point as well, you know, maybe that an experience rearing its head for some of the players. Calming core looking like one of the youngest rosters I think that we've got coming into Madrid. They are, yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe that does showcase. Of course, some of them do have that international experience. They do, and, you know, you see Magnum up there towards the top, managed to find that hole in the pistol round and has been very consistent so far on the defense side for his team. So we get to see another rifle round here, starting to get up towards some big ultimates too. Narrate and Magnum's ults in particular are going to be excellent on the retake as Narrate takes first contact and wants to hunt for more. He's not scared, is he? No, Shin was holding up towards the belt, so he had angles covered. Martin's crosshair placement looked like it might have been off for just a moment as Aeyang's head poking below, but I don't believe they caught any whiff of the jet stuck in that corner. I say stuck, hiding. Hiding, he's got the starting dash, of a trap. To get out. Yeah, it's a lovely position to play in. FPX didn't quite like what they were seeing just from cutting the noise there. They show a bit of that presence just initially, now making their way over towards B. 
contact replay, is that what's going to be called here? Certainly looks like it. The same kind of B end with that double omen smoke setup that we've seen here. from FPX in a few rounds so far. All the util combine together. Unfortunate for life there. He will fall just through the smoke as it was propped up. Bloomed and blossomed, but FPX keen to still play this one. Maybe a bit more aggressively as well. The position of some of these players. Berlin taking a peek out towards Kitchen. Expected though. Now you see it. Thrash exchanged. Dropping down onto either side. Detainment potentially there. Looks like it. Yeah, Berlin. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And now positioning being swarmed and approached from every possible angle. I saw. Realizing now that really has to give it up. It wasn't that mid position. He was the insurance policy, but now has to save that rifle. Gutting as Carmen Core get up to five. Absolutely putting away FBX. I, this is looking like they've got a very good idea of how they want to deal with this classic exec that we're seeing from FBX. Nobody is getting caught on sight. Tamaji is just getting a kill by spamming a common angle where he's expecting them to be pushing up, yeah. defending that over push into Snowman and making sure that they have the pieces together to be able to get back in onto sight. FBX are finding it difficult here to force the fights. One of the big powers of their uh, composition is the ability to combo flashes together. And they're not really finding an opportunity to do that because Kamikor are playing so much further back. Initial expenditure of Util, but they are playing really far back. I mean, that's just the retake protocols. Get out of my way. Desk was mentioning it. It's super, super well drilled for Kamikor. Yeah. The bread and butter, really, of you know what was getting them so many of the wins because they were looking so well honed. And there's always a little bit of danger when you allow your opponents to plant against you so often that you wouldn't be able to pull it off. You know, most teams, even the great ones, are only converting something like, you know, a third of their retakes. But these teams at this event are looking to try to change that. So this makes it feel like it's something similar over towards B, but it's not a full commitment. No, in fact, they haven't used both the smokes. I mean, Berlin hasn't locked off the angle, so they're getting information the entire time. Magnum has just been egoing the angle on B. And Martin. Ready, waiting, not spotted in this position before. Be able to receive this. Now, Dizzy wasn't collected over towards B to clear it, so they don't even have that util to clear this angle. Oh. Up top, though, yeah, crosshair pacement. You've got to take a gamble if you play in that spot. It could come from two different directions, and so gambling incorrectly there. Life is the one to capitalize. Magnum, though, still with ultimate. How does FPX deal with that? Put it down with a wingman, clears out a bit off the side. Now the plan online, but here's the lockdown. Oh, hang on, denied ball. from even going for that. They can't go for the plan. Time, time. They have to fight this one. FBX have to make a call to do so. But now, detainment is going to be happening anytime soon. This is a round basically done and dusted. Online there with a res. Magnum back into the fight. Three versus three. But with time like this, I mean, there's just no chance. You have to kill everybody. It's not there for FBX. And a complete, complete tactical outplay there by KC. They're thinking ahead to... In terms of the ultimates that they have available, it's very clear that that lockdown is going to get used. And FBX didn't come up with a game plan quickly enough to try to challenge it before it went down. Didn't have a game plan to try to increase the tempo. And I think we're just expecting to get the plant for free. They're thinking, all right, Casey, they've been playing retake this entire time. They're just going to use lockdown. We're going to be able to play the plant. And Aeon could not get that spike down. I love to see this. The overall game plan of Kamen Court just fundamentally is fantastic as well. They've been playing super far back on B, almost conditioning that they've got nobody playing towards B main or towards yellow whatsoever. And then they're playing these one and done angles towards A. I mean, yes, Martin ended up falling, but uh, they've just been doing such a fantastic job. And like you said, you know, too delayed in terms of just thinking about the game plans. Can't recall one step ahead. This is also the second timeout for FPX, called already. So if we. You know, framing this in the context of FBX trying to get this revenge matchup against a Carmichael that's retooled so heavily, looking for a potential good beginning to Madrid. This is a disaster. They had their chances early on in some of these rounds, but the later that this is going, the less and less chance it looks like they're getting as Carmichael polish things up a little and get comfortable, get into the groove. Down 0-6 without any timeouts remaining. If they don't end up winning this rifle round that we're about to watch, it's a disaster zone. It could be dire. I mean, they are quite literally running their heads into a brick blue wall right now. <laughs> they cannot find a way through. Now, are they going to get conditioned? You can see elements of it from Carmichael again. Like I was saying before, they weren't playing anybody up close towards B. They've got Martin with an op now. 
is playing in this spot. Kamika, I think, are hoping now that FPX make the decision to start contacting into B. Is he broken? Martin can now play onto the ankle. It's watched for the shot. Missed and go to wide. But they haven't heard the dash. They know that Martin has not left that in a hurry. There they hear the shot from the operator, and Martin's going to bait that out, make it feel like he's still there, and try to rotate to anticipate this attack side rotate that Berlin is calling. Yeah, and he is. He's already called it for the rotation. The troops on the move. And guess what, Martin? Again, Here. one step ahead. Like you said, still has the dash in his back pocket. Didn't end up using it to escape. A lot of flashes that he has to dodge here, though. Leah, Dizzy, both broken. Narate with a pick. I mean, Narate just back towards Rafters there. Dizzy also returning as well, getting the acknowledgement of his players there. Now there's 45 seconds left. Could pivot into a different direction if you want to, but FPX looking a bit indecisive, just a pause in the play. Now the paranoia. Sent flying here, but again, no connections. Martin towards the back. Trying to go wide here with a Dizzy. Narate is on one, man. He's on one. Almost there for the ace, but four kills eventually shut down in the end, but seven to zero. The scoreline we're looking like, the round differential is immense right now, and you're truly seeing it. I mean, we said on paper it was going to look like one of our more one-sided matchups, but Carmen Core, in almost just every element of the game right now, they're ahead of it. And they're destroying them. I <laughs> think Kakuga said on the desk, <laughs> trying to break the Leah and the Dizzy in one go. Narate's like, yeah, bet. <laughs> Just rinses them both before FBX can use them to get into the site, and then swings around for four kills afterwards. FBX are getting pasted. And I, th I think it's a really interesting idea, right? This is one of our most one-sided matchups you could possibly see at the tournament oh. on paper. But what does the parity look like? Everybody was saying, you know, anyone can win Madrid. There are chances for even these teams to be able to make upsets. Even Magnum himself, you know, coming into this. They're not going to make a mistake with prior teams, you know. Maybe they turn up to these international tournaments, they expect to have a, a freebie, an opening match that just is so one-sided, but I'm, of course, still showing him respect. Absolutely. Yeah, Magnum said, quote, if I had to rate FPX in terms of macro, I think they have a lot of gaps. And then he said, but it's Valorant. Anyone can lose. Martin, under pressure, though. Yep, Dizzy in his face, though. It does fade away. He's just absolutely caught a timing still. Autumn will shut down a counterpart. Damage number, no kill collected. Smokes at some point surely going to be fading. How are they going to get this spike down? They really don't have any options or tools, but there we go. That's a huge one. Yep, a gap available with that up drop down. Autumn picks it up. Acquiring that upgrade. Now we can really just see if he can hunt for any more sort of kills. Now this is a player advantage for FPX. Question is now, how do Carmen Court approach it? Dizzy, down to the back along with the molly. Players all over the place. Thrash to lead the charge. Entertainment there. Shin, round to the side, but doesn't expect Berlin. And there it is. Okay, a round on the board for FPX. Thrifty win. And that one basically set up by Autumn getting into a nice spot. Martin has been caught out in a number of these more aggressive positions. And this is the opening. He had a chance trying to take the timing. But then Autumn also finding this pick onto Tamashi over in Snowman. That sets up the player advantage. And FBX are finally able to capitalize nice. and bring around to themselves. Can they work this into a little bit of momentum and make it less of a one-sided matchup? They would love to. Now, back into the action, you're seeing it. Line in the sand drawn in terms of the skirmish. Berlin. Berlin has the he's operator. Got the operator, yeah. I mean, he's TP close. Yeah, of course your IGL omen has the off. <laughs> Angel emote. Uh, now an attempt for them to try and get themselves into the side wall. Definitely impeding them. Dash to the top here. Dizzy in their faces. Everybody not able to see really anything at all. But FPX granted the site now. So that's online for them. A forward position here, playing inside the pit. This is really going to test Kamiko once more, especially with Autumn ripping off heads. Up towards the back of the side, just really impossible to clear this through. And here it is, momentum. On the side of FPX, this is basically a done deal into the round. Look at it, second one on the board. Now maybe you can start to keep this going. That's huge. Didn't even have to use all of the ultimates at their disposal. Still have the Thrash available for them in the next. 
And FBX using the pit to be able to establish much more aggressive post plant positions. Put pressure on KC before they can get into retake spots. But the rate's just flooding out heaven there thinking, yeah, they're going to give us this space for free. That's what they've done every other time. And FBX have brought the battle to them. Amazingly enough, those two rounds have actually been enough to knock down the economy of Carmichael. So we're not seeing a full buy here. I think the money would be flourishing, but instead, okay. At least Martin has a rifle. Here. Here. Really quite aggressive into mid. Very aggressive. But Martin hasn't been able to do too much from these extremely aggressive positions. He's the danger in the round. The rest of KC mostly playing for a little bit of plant pressure and then the retake. Martin's been the dice that they roll to see whether he can find value. And this time, just missing the timing of FBX, who've all gone into B. Clear and Dizzy all comboed up. Smokes to get himself into the deeper angle. Autumn is here this time. Not using that second smoke to block off this one. Autumn, he's got the operator. He meant to lock this one down. Two potential positions. Shin, he's taking out Berlin. Now Berlin's been played in that angle all the time, honestly. Most of the time. Yeah, and it's a spot where Autumn can't actually hold for Berlin to get into position. It's a bit of a freebie there, actually. Kamiko giving it. Decent damage there, actually. Yeah, diligence being shown with the util to clear through most of this. Uh, Casey have a wall to work with, but there's a thrash on the other side. Martin, what a peak! What a return! Ayang goes straight there, and here it is with a spray down of life. War can't save you from that one. Great awareness from life. Adapting to what Kamikor have been doing, making sure that he's in a position where he's still going to be able to get picks over the top of the wall. FBX holding on in these post plant situations. I mean, Ayak is like lining up a shot with Martin and Tomaji's right behind. FBX going from 0-7 to winning three rounds in a row with the potential to make this quite a competitive half. Yeah, you wouldn't think it. You would not think it if you were only tuning in for the beginning, but they have the chance. Slow warp. Used here, Shin feeling the danger now. The heat turned up. That isn't okay. Slow up. Don't think it was intended that one. Molly's being used. Snake bite here, close. And there it is, actually. That bouncing into that wrong angle. Martin can't evacuate. Can he stand his ground? Can he hold it down? The answer is no. And that's probably going to incentivize Naray to try to make a play here instead of just playing for the player down retake. We get to see now do they trust the system? Do they try to go for the hero play? Man down here, snake by forwards, life. Tucking behind the box, out into the open though, has to just spank on the rest of his teammates. Lovely move from Ayang, Magnum. Nasty stuff, oh my! Almost making a go of it. So close. And Berlin, the player with the open hand, the goes for the rifle to win the 1v1 at the end and keep this momentum going for FPX. KC making a good job of it, despite the fact that they were down players. But this opening play as Shin swings to try to relieve pressure from Martin. Martin can't quite get enough kills to help. Final round of the half here, and KC are going to be knocked down to four Bulldogs. There is a great chance that FBX get up to five and rewrite this terrible beginning they had to Icebox. That's just insanity. The pick got popped down over towards B. No immediate pressure. So Tomaji might think that the rest of FPX are looking to work down mid or over towards A. Martin once again alone on A, tucking himself into these aggressive, unexpected positions. But generally, FPX have been able to either dodge or deal with it. It's slow and somewhat ponderous, though, for FPX in the first 40 seconds of this round. Now they're making a commitment to deal with some of Magnum's utility in mid and create threats and pressure around Autumn. a leg. Oh, it's betrayal. And there it is, sets up Autumn for an easy one. No possibility of that being rezzed. It's now being offloaded, dash towards of Autumn, top of the box, just spotting. Head of Shin, unable to rip that one off, but Berlin's caught into the mid flank. And now the ult online, Magnum has that retake ultimate that caused so much pressure for FBX previously. It'll be opting to use this as a really forward backside position. FBX are trying to fight this one. Then they realize at least now that the lockdown is down, but do they have any util to try and fight this one and clear it? Out Whoa. and through, they don't need util, man. They got guns and weaponry still locked down. Didn't get broken. 1v2. 
Plays out of dodge here from FPX. The positioning is going to be known and noted. The rate. How do you hit that into the 1v1? Wingman. Exactly the partner in crime that you'd want at least. Taps out of position, trying to force life out into the open, but it's a guessing game for the raid entirely. Doesn't know where he is, and life playing time immaculately. It's seven to five, and how the bloody hell did FBX salvage that? What a ridiculous comeback! We were all ready to talk about how it was playing out as expected on paper, and then FBX fire back with five in a row. One enemy remaining, and a lot to do with the rifling coming online. I feel like Aeyang has just. Woken up. Go on, go on, look at me, bro. Let's go. They're fired up. They're feeling it. Life on his feet. They certainly are. Let's send it down to the analyst desk to bring it down for the half. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, what a great half that was. A nice comeback from FPX, but Kakuka, yeah. it all started with a great chain of rounds coming from Casey. Yeah, exactly. And it was a perfect example of what we were discussing, right? Those retakes coming in, the protocols being completely sharp up, uh, coming in from Casey. I think that round five is a perfect example of it when we would see the exchange of the ultimates from Gecko, and they know exactly where to put the pressure and how to address everything that is going on in the map by the positions that they expect the other players to be in. The follow-up from each of the players, it's clean, but but then after those seven rounds, something changes in FPX. Maybe. And for FPX, I think the adaptation was really good. In these post plants, once they got that spike down, once they got that space, they were using that second dizzy refresh to fight forward and get space in these late rounds and really punish yeah. KC while they were still setting up, getting their util in hand. That's the X factor of this team. They will sometimes pull out these hyper aggressive rounds where they stop you from setting up the way you want to play. It was really good yeah. on that comeback. I think it was a little bit of, of both, right? We have a KC that made this getting too comfortable because everything is working and an FPX that, you know, it starts making a little bit of mistakes. We see, um, you know, the flashes being a little bit separated one from another, but then when they realize that they just have to disrupt that and just keep pushing a little bit more, that changes. Now, coming into their defense, as I said, it's very complicated to defend this map without a Sentinel. The aggression has to be there. FPX is very known for that and they have to keep it up if they want to keep that score up. It absolutely does, but if KC wants to close this map out, they have the fans to do so in this arena right now. There's, there's not a huge amount of fans out on day one, but every single KC fan feels like 10 of them. Yeah, shout out to the Gentlemates fan as well in the Gentlemates jersey, uh, but this blue war, it is looking so, so strong, but I'm going to send this back to the casters and see if KC can close this one out. Let's we'll see if they can close it out, but listen, FBX, kind of momentum behind them as well. All it takes is a pistol round, you've got an even match, at least an even map. And uh, this is a team, and I mean, a reminder, I think this is an FBX squad that's got a bit of a chip on their shoulders from the previous international appearances. They want to turn up to this event, and they want to really prove as well that teams should be paying attention to them. They want to teach teams how it's done. They've literally said that themselves. And uh, for Carmen yeah. Court, left reeling a little bit, I think, as well, off that string of rounds, but we'll see. It's a new half now, getting started with a pistol. And it looks like there might be a clash in B main to begin this one very quickly. It's an unusual spot to fight over. Not too many teams trying to fight this area aggressively. But FPX have got a pistol round strat what? that involves them pushing down mid off the back of this pressure. Yeah, the Viper Wars. They've actually so abandoned it very early though, Brent. I mean, it is easy. Surely you collect the kills. Berlin gets three. That's wild. Get the hell out of here. Dealing with the util single-handedly. I mean, the man was basically alone. And now, how do you clear this one out? They saw to the side, lovely peek, off with the dizzy. That is a slam dunk finish. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more about the blue wall. Tell me about the Berlin wall. That's, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, he just, how, have, how has he managed to pick up three there? <laughs> that protocol of jumping through the one way, I think it is a really nice idea. First player jumps through, drags the crosshair is the game plan. Perhaps doesn't quite drag it far enough in that situation because they're swinging almost exactly into Berlin's crosshair. It just worked so well. Bottom of the scoreboard and comes out like that on the pistol. That's what you're saying, Brennan. It only takes that one round. They are being swamped in this position. Like, so doesn't know which way to look. Teammate happens in the back. Okay, traded. Three versus three. Equalized here. Dash forward to the peak, Ayang. They want to get aggressive and defend these weapons, I think. But Kamikor aren't even going for them. No, not quite. Wall up onto the high ground. Really just props up Tomazi for an easy peek. Spike planted. Easy kill for Aang. Autumn there. Can't quite land the shots there, but the Marshall, but finally a bit of damage done to the body. 100 left, one player left standing. It's Martin. 
gets some of the plant down, but this is a really difficult situation to try and win. And there it is, spam damage and the flank attempt there. Very surprised that Carmen Corps played that round so quickly after they got themselves into a 3v3. If they'd slowed things down, I believe there were two Bulldogs lying around for them to be able to try and pick up and use. But they got roped into the pace of that. And then all of the danger just kind of trickled away. See how Yang deals with that boost play. It's quite a nice idea from Carmen Corps, but something we've seen a lot from these Sage teams. And you wouldn't have believed it if you only watched the first seven rounds. But seven in a row, straight back for FBX, means the game is tied here on Icebox. Nice oh, set up now onto the bonus round. <laughs> the two players survived in a prior round here for FBX, so there's not too much danger, but guess what? The Avengers are bloody here. I mean, listen, the amount of players they've got trying to play that four position belt, not really accounted for. It's a high low setup. They are really mopping up the rest of these players. An attempt by life, repositions, but just out into the open. It's all being watched for. <laughs> Cheeky idea, I do respect it. I love the idea. But FPX take a gamble, shove four players in, and KC, that discipline that we were seeing from them all throughout EMEA, I think that's the first round where you really see it exemplified here in Icebox. All down to one. Looks almost impossible. Yeah, so it's just going to be looking to do that. Surely, damage. surely here the streaks are broken. We don't see another seven in a row for KC, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even possible. It's really not. I mean, at that point. You win the map 14-7? Yeah, dusted. Or is it or? Maybe we get them to skirt the rules. We'll do first to 16. <laughs> <laughs> FPX, though, really have shown that they're not willing to just roll over in these kind of games, especially when they're pushed. I mean, they certainly come into this one as the underdogs, but I had a chance to talk to Berlin before, uh, you know, these games kicked off. And I asked him, how much better do you think this version of FPX is compared to last year's? You know, if you were following this team in 2023, okay, they looked all right. They were making it to some of the international events. They've Since then, they've added life, who's up towards the top of the scoreboard for them here. He's been a big player for them. And Berlin said, Two and a half times better. It's very precise. I don't yeah. know where he quite got that from, but he's <laughs> he's a lot more confident this year than he was in the last, when they were only able to get one map at two global appearances. And they've run the numbers. Two and a half times, maybe enough to try and take it against them. That's a cheeky play. Cool idea. All to boost themselves up. Berlin, no. Deals with the trespasser in through mid. That's, well, there is the follow-up. Ayang. Watching it for any sort of passerby. There's only three players now left standing for Carmen Court. Looks like a read to me that they were expecting Berlin to be playing B. You know, both of those controller players for FBX fighting over B. They baited out Lysor there, who swung off the back of a paranoia that was extremely optimistic. They are so damn aggressive, though. Willing to take the risks, aren't they? I mean, yeah. Aeyang has just walked up all the way behind. And all of this in a player advantage situation where you don't need to force fights like this. It's a round winning or losing play, probably, that Aeyang and Life have gone for. Carmen Core are well and truly trapped here. Though I don't believe they know it yet. No indicator. Here. Contacting together. Opened at the gunplay, can carry them through a round like this one. Looking behind them, but no, not to the side, not expecting a player out towards Yelas Berlin. Still not cleaned up. Spike though, planted. Two players though for them. Flash over the top, Martin. How's he doing this? No way, no way to Carmen Core find that. That's outrageous. FBX had them cornered, caged up, no exits. Utility being used from the back as well. And Martin ducks, bobs, weaves, and picks up three. You are joking. How have they done that? I mean, the first pick, lovely. But then this kill before getting the dizzy. And then a jump push in the nice! Stand up, stand up now. Oh. <laughs> All right, a bit of fire with these Carmen Core players in their first time on the Big Masters stage. Getting heated. Stacked though from the FX players here. Ball has made to refight. What a shot. Still aggression showcased here by Martin. As his teammates are going to be there with him. Got his back live. Live? What? <laughs> you see, KC have no idea that that was going to happen. Even a possibility. Yeah, just no idea at all. 
They didn't even think of that as a timing that FBX could have chosen for some aggression. You can see how the unexpected nature of how FBX plays can catch teams off guard. But thus far, Martin in the last round and this has managed to bail his team out. Berlin knives Ooh. out. No gun. Watching for the mid-aggression. And Aeyang, they should have some idea, was over towards A earlier on. That dizzy was used. His shooting's been fairly good. But the most likely outcome here is that he just goes down and gets a thrash online for the next. This game has been so streaky. There's only 30 seconds left. <laughs> 30 seconds left. I don't see how he's able to convert. And KC are going to be able to respond with three in a row after FBX got seven to tie it up. Now, <laughs> would you refer to this one as a back and forth game, Bren? Because technically, it's gone back. And then it went <laughs> forth, <laughs> and now it's going back again. Yeah, but, yeah. By the by, the technical definition. Yeah, but it really has not been competitive in the like uh, round to round basis. No, no. Very streaky. Very, very streaky. Autumn's gonna get an op online and try to peek under two. By the look of things, would anticipate him just getting smoked off by Tamaji very early on. But we'll see. Yeah, he gets an the early pick. pick. Wow. Okay. Tomazy e thrash. Used to see if they can clear and cleave their way in through B main. Yang is open to the window here. Lurk timing could be brutal. Lurk timing could be brutal. Spots the head. Spots the head. Magnum is racing ahead, man. Doesn't want anything to do with this. Look at him. Ducking straight into the floor. Maybe anticipating a repeak, but no, he's backing it away. In the meantime. Yeah, speaking about repeaks, Berlin in a player advantage situation again. FPX deciding to try to make the play to win the round. Unnecessary, for sure. And Berlin does get punished for it. Res on life of Shin is going to play for this one. Portion of the wall broken, but that's <laughs> all good. Yeah, thankfully. All good. Thankfully, Alton wasn't watching that again. That was only 45 seconds left. Walking their way over towards A. It's hard to get a move on, though. What util do they have to try and clear close? They are, I think, quite scared of the prospect that life could be just in a one and done, especially when he's playing Reyna. Does he see the head just on the belt there? Looks unlikely. Orb in his face. 30 seconds left. Players approaching rapidly on the position. It's a double face as the orb goes down. Only 20 seconds left here. No real utility as far as I can see for FPX to deny this one. Magnum is Magnum. really far behind and has missed the timing. Yeah, he has, but he's going to be making a call at least for his team here. Over to buy some time. Really wide face by Nare. Claiming it, he's feeling it, man. It's yeah. four around for him, and this time, Kami Corda not messing around. And this is another situation where KC lost players early on in the round. They weren't expecting the op to be on that sight line. It is entirely possible for the Viper to throw that mid line up without exposing any part of their body. But Autumn caught Thomas G at the beginning of the round, and Berlin ended up making a mistake when they were up, and it just opened the door for Narate to take over. Narate for Kami Court. One of the North American imports over to EMEA has been lighting the world up. He's been looking unbelievably good, but certainly one of those players that we don't know quite how they're going to perform when it gets to the master stage. Are the nerves going to be there? And Berlin goes walkabouts again Berlin. in this round. They just expect it. It's happened so many times now. They were doubled up. I mean, basically a high-low setup. One player crouched in front of the other. Yeah. Just waiting for the aggression. Yeah, and it's very, very similar to what Berlin did in the previous round to lose them that player advantage situation. FBX have got to be careful. They've clearly got what it takes to be able to bring the game to Carmine Corp. But this has given me flashbacks of the finals they played in VCT where they arguably should have beaten EDG and they let so many of those advantages slip through their fingers. Here comes Aeyang with the play again. He's got a flash out in his hand, still gets one kill. Maybe setting up Autumn for a bit of success, but no, everybody cleaned up. Carmine Corp. Live and kicking with three of their players. Just got to try and hunt out where is life. Yields up now, not letting anything slip. Thrash there, connects, detained. Humiliation time on the grand stage. As Kamakor up to 12. For our first knife kill of Masters Madrid. Do they really count when you've got the Thrash Attain on them? I think it, it I, is I the disrespect. Yeah, I think they should personally. <laughs> Don't think we should be recording those in the stats, but... 
Yeah, this is very well dealt with by KC. You can still see some moments where they're not quite oh. anticipating what FBX are going to go for, but for the majority... <laughs> for the majority, they have got this on lock. The anticipation of Berlin's push at the beginning of that round and the way they executed was immaculate. They're looking for that punish again onto Tomaji. It's not there. Not going to get it. Yeah, this time playing a little safer, doubling up with Magnum as well. Casey, one round away, five chances of converting. Keep it clean. It's going to be their aim, tucked to the corner, that's life, avoiding the initial flash cross from the ropes. Accurate enough to win that fight out, but dismiss in towards the back now. Underneath Raft, there's plenty more players ready to try and fight him. Target rich environment, take your pick, take your time, son, because this is you lighting the world on fire. Life with the ace. Holy! And he's on his feet after that one, too. If the KC players are trying to keep him rooted in that seat, they've well and truly failed in round 20. He's dropped 24 kills. I mean, he's the only player that's actually able to evade the way that KC are playing, because he can get one, get out, and pick the most awkward timings through all of their utility. Springs out of his seat. Almost, knock <laughs> <laughs> Almost knocking it off the stage. He's feeling it. Definitely feeling it. Back into the fight. Back into the action. Carmen Core, slow and steady. It's their approach to begin. They know how aggressively FPX are liking to play, and they do have both the duelist players. Dash still available. Dismiss there if life gets a kill. Lots of exit strategies, but here we look at this. I mean, they're just holding for it. Still, life claims it. He's on fire. Barely a shred of Narade poking out. Still manages to catch the headshot. Magnum's one away from having a massive ultimate, and they're sneaking around oh, underneath them. Life goes for the reclear. It's a dizzy. Still, it's traded. Magnum is there. On for the two there. Hang Yang drops down. Dash is there. Martins finds it. Forwards now. After the lockdown, it's 2v2. This could be it to seal the map. What is going to be the answer from FBX? Walking out, holding, walking out, hoping that they can punish, but no. Just granted the kill. And Berlin, the IGL, to 1v2. Cover going out. All on the line to keep his team in the map. Paranoia available. Smoke's still there, wants to walk, though, doubled up. They're dominating the position if he chooses to just peek. Ever so slightly into it, there's going to be a shorty ready and waiting. One more smoke used. Tap. Force them out into the open. No easy fights, no easy exits. That is Carmen Core sealing it up. Nice and pretty for map number one. 13-8. A bizarre opening to Masters Madrid but it had some great moments.